welcome to Edison Open House Future of Transport 2021. With me is a pioneer in battery technology, a company called Ilica, and with me is their CEO, Graham Purdy. Graham, welcome. Thank you very much. Pleased to be here. Now, solid state battery technology, you better start by explaining what a solid state battery is. Yes, well, solid state batteries are actually very similar to standard lithium ion batteries. So a normal lithium ion cell uh, is a very simple construction. Uh, at its essence, it's got two electrodes, positive and negative, uh, the cathode and the anode respectively. And they're separated by a polymer sheet, which is there to insulate the electrodes from each other so the cell doesn't short, and a liquid electrolyte um, and the job of the liquid electrolyte is to transfer the lithium ions backwards and forwards across the cell. So from the cathodes to the anode when you charge the cell and in the reverse direction when you draw a current from the cell to power your device. And in a solid state battery, what you do is you replace that liquid electrolyte and the polymer separator with a single solid material. Uh, in Ilica's case, we use a, an oxide ceramic which is lithium ion conducting but is electrically insulating. And does that give you an advantage in terms of the amount of energy that you can get from a battery of a, of a, of a, of a normal size? Absolutely. So the key here is that the gravimetric energy density or in layman's terms the amount of energy that you can store in a given weight of cell is about doubled. So effectively, you carry twice the amount of energy uh, in the same weight of cell. Um, and also actually, uh, lithium ion cells, when they use a solid state electrolyte, uh, are, um, they have a higher power density. So that means that they can be charged more rapidly. I mean, the rule of thumb is that you can charge them about six times faster. So if it takes you an hour to recharge your lithium ion battery in your phone, if you replaced it with a solid state battery, it would recharge in about 10 minutes. So faster charging, more power for uh, size. And what about end of life? Because end of life has become something that we've all become very concerned about. Absolutely. So, um, you know, one of the, the challenges actually that we're going to face as a society moving forward is that um, lithium ion cells, as they've become ubiquitous, uh, you know, will need to be recycled. Uh, they contain you know, valuable metals that we'll want to use again and put back into the supply chain. Um, with standard lithium ion cells, uh, it's not so straightforward actually because the liquid electrolyte is toxic and it needs to be drained off and you need to get rid of that polymer or plastic separator. Uh, and ensure that that doesn't uh, end up in the environment. And then you can you know, recycle the electrodes. But with solid state batteries, in particular, using the type of chemistry that, that Illich is using, you, you effectively just take the whole device once you've stripped off uh, the, the packaging uh, around the cell, uh, and you can process the, the solid materials pretty much in the same way that you would process the materials that you would mine out of the ground in the first instance. So effectively, you know, they're, they're like sort of metal ores uh, and you take out the, the precious parts, the valuable parts uh, of the, the cell and then put them back into the production process. And longer life too? Yes. Um, so, um, you know, one of the goals is that batteries should last at least 10 years. Of course, when you, you buy a, a car, you know, these days you expect it to, to last 10 years and you don't want, if possible, to have to replace the battery pack midway through the vehicle's life. And solid state uh, is known to have a, a longer lifetime. So um, it can withstand more cycles before the cell starts to degrade uh, and you need to swap out the pack. Now, I know that you started little with small batteries for things like, I presume, things like hearing aids or phones and things like that. But now you've gone big. Goliath, even. Tell me a bit more about Goliath. Yes. So, um, you know, the, the, the initial cells that we made are what we call Stereax cells. And um, they are actually technically 
thin film cells so that you know one of the benefits is that they can be miniaturized in particular for um, miniature medical implants so uh, it would be uh, implanted cochlear hearing aids rather than the ones that you wear externally but um, also for some of the other fascinating medical applications that are being developed in a sort of revolutionizing healthcare actually you know things like um, you know uh, nerve stimulators uh, that can replace opioids and, and other painkillers and, and orthopedic implants to help ensure that uh, when people get hip replacements or knee replacements that you can you know monitor uh, those joints and, and ensure that after the surgery that the patient is doing the right type of physiotherapy and gets the right type of coaching and support to ensure uh, optimum recovery from the surgical intervention. Um, and you know we're seeing substantial demand for those miniature steriac cells. We're building a new fabrication facility close to our headquarters in Southampton at the moment. Just been there this morning actually to check on progress. Um, but over the last couple of years, we've been working together with OEMs from the automotive industry to see how we can you know, take some of the technology that's gone into these miniature batteries and scale it up so that it can be applied uh, for, uh, for motive power in vehicles. And that's our Goliath program. And uh, in fact, I, I've got one of these cells here. I think you can see it. Uh, it's about uh, an A6 format and you put approximately 2000 of those together, build a module and a pack, and then put it into uh, an electric vehicle. And uh, you know, it will give you the range that you aspire to in your EV. Now we're seeing a lot of activity in the battery sector. What's your vision of how you are gonna operate in that sector and indeed what the future of the sector is? Well, I think, you know, the, the future of the sector is extremely bright. I mean, we're, we're seeing substantial investments around the world in <clears throat> increasing the capacity of uh, battery production. Uh, and, you know, this country will be, be no exception. Um, we've seen a lot of legislative and regulatory drivers being put in place to support the adoption of EVs. Uh, and as a result, we're seeing, you know, substantial growth uh, in that sector. Um, actually, uh, equally, we're seeing a decline in the uh, production of ICEs or internal combustion engines. Um, and, um, you know, Ilica has a very important role to play in supporting this uh, gradual transition actually from let's call them traditional lithium ion cells to, uh, to more affordable, more technically advanced solid state batteries. And most analysts now would agree that over the next 10 years, you will see a replacement of traditional lithium ion cells with their solid state equivalents. In the same way, you know, that we, we saw that transition from NICAD batteries to lithium ion over the last 10 years. Uh, you know, when you bought a power drill 10 years ago, typically it would have a, a nickel cadmium battery. They aren't sold really anymore for power tools, it's all lithium ion. And, and we will see that same transition into solid state because of the advantages we were talking about earlier. And what's the status currently of your program to develop these bigger batteries for electric vehicles? Yeah, so uh, we use uh, the scale that NASA invented to, uh, to judge actually the, the state of readiness of technology to put into their space shuttle program. Uh, and they refer to a, a technology readiness level or TRL, uh, where a, a TRL of one is that eureka moment that an academic might have in the university facility. Um, and then a, a TRL of 10 is effectively a mass produced item you know, you can order it on Amazon and it'll turn up the next day. Um, so with these um, Goliath cells, we are currently at a, a TRL of about three, which means that we are still prototyping and improving uh, the, the performance of the cells. We manufacture them um, at our pre-pilot plant uh, in Romsey, uh, at, the at the facility that I'm speaking to you from today. Uh, and, you know, we've got a fairly low volume production. 
And as we go forward, we're going to automate the equipment that we've got at this facility. So we'll have a, a tenfold increase in the uh, capacity of this facility over the next 18 months. <clears throat> and then we will transfer into um, the Battery Industrialization Center or UK BIC, which has been built in Coventry. Um, it represents an investment of about 135 million uh, that the taxpayer has uh, supported. And that's actually an open access facility for scaling up novel battery architectures and, and chemistries. And we've got a framework agreement already in place. We put that in place in September of, of last year. And uh, we're working closely with them to define the proprietary equipment that we'll install alongside the existing assets that they've already got there to make the solid state batteries. And then beyond that, we will of course partner with some of the, the larger battery manufacturing organizations uh, to be able to give uh, the, the sort of giga scale uh, battery production to get us down that cost curve and, and get the, the cost point actually to one which will allow mass adoption. So scaling is clearly critical in order to give some return to investors. How will they know that your plans are on track? Well, um, you know, as a publicly listed company, actually, we're pretty transparent. So there's a, a regular flow of news uh, as we go through the various milestones uh, that we achieve with Scale-Up. Um, you know, we announced, for instance, uh, just recently a partnership with a large engineering consultancy, which is part of the Fiat group called uh, Comau. And we're working together with them to uh, define the capital investment and do the detailed design for that implementation at the BIC that I was just talking about before. Um, and, uh, you know, we will update the market as we make progress with those designs and um, secure finance to implement those plans uh, on a progressively larger scale. Now I'm asking all those who appear in Transport Futures 2021 to outline what their vision of the future of transport is. So Graham, where do you think we'll be? What do you think the transport future of say, 10 years time will be? Well, I think it's a very exciting time actually to be working in the, the transport sector because we are in the middle of the electric revolution. And whereas maybe even five years ago, we still would have debated whether electric vehicles were going to be implemented in a sensible time frame. I think all you know, people across the industry now um, are committed to that transition from internal combustion engines to electric. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, an annual growth rate of about 38% uh, as we move over the next decade of electric vehicles in terms of the, the stock of those electric vehicles actually on the road. Um, and in 10 years time, I'm convinced that actually the dominant um, electric vehicle uh, energy storage mechanism will be solid state and how that will translate into the driving experience will be that we will get a longer range from electric vehicles uh, the, the vehicles will be more affordable because you know that reduced pack size and the ability to store um, you know more energy uh, will translate into lower costs at the mass produced scale um, and um, we will uh, see attractive aesthetically compelling designs because you know the compact battery packs will no longer you know be the, the dominant uh, part of the vehicle design you'll be able to have much greater control over the amount of space that you've got to accommodate the battery pack in the vehicle so really an electric version of our current transport system or do you see actually the mix of say cars and public vehicles and other transport uh, modes changing? Well, I think in cities, um, you know, you're going to see uh, a greater use of public transport um, and perhaps a, a reduction in the number of vehicles actually on the road. 
but I think car sharing schemes will have actually a big influence on a reduction in the number of vehicles because, you know, frankly, uh, most of us don't really use uh, personal transport uh, as often as perhaps really justifies the expense of, of keeping a vehicle for our own personal use. You know, uh, the data is that we, we really only use a vehicle for one or two short journeys uh, a day. You know, the, the average uh, journey distance is only 30 miles uh, on a day. And, uh, you know, if you live in a, a city, by far the most efficient and, and economically sensible way to, uh, to manage transport is to maximize your use of public transport and to have access to a car sharing scheme um, for those longer journeys. And I think, you know, we, we've seen the start of that trend and that will continue over the next 10 years. Graham, it's a very exciting vision of the future and uh, solid state batteries are a critical part of that. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thanks, Vivian. It's been a pleasure.